Hi guys, happy Wednesday. It is April 28th and I usually don't do anything during the work week because I'm very busy with work and all. But I've been playing with this technique on my breaks and on my lunch hour and I just had to share it. Now I'm sure if you've been on YouTube at all, you see it all across the universe. Uh, I think Tina Zink was the first one to bring it out last summer. But now it's just made a new explosion. It's using your blends and vellum to create fantastic backgrounds. Some of these I haven't mounted yet, but look at these backgrounds. So that's the back side. Here's the colored side. But there's the back side. So there's one. This, I got a little boxy on it, but you can kind of see it. I mean, these are just fantastic. And the thing is, when you, they may not look like much, but when you put them up against the white, look at how that just pops. Okay, so a few more here. I'm going to go real quick. I mean, look at these. They are so gorgeous. As you can see, no two the same. And these I've already have mounted. These were my first attempts, and that's so why I already have these mounted on the on the um, the adhesive the adhesive sheets. Okay, so there's that one. I don't know if you can see very very soft. And then this one. Then I cut those in half. I think it was more that way. All right, and then this one. Which I'm not sure what I did, how I did this. It's not as splotchy. But anyway, I'll just quickly show you how I do it. Now, again, I use my, uh, this is a frame, a plastic frame from a big box craft store. And I've just put in my chamois from the dollar store. And then I've taken a, uh, vellum. And I've cut it down. I don't know what this is measuring. This measures six because that's how wide the adhesive sheets are. And three and three fourths almost. Because if you cut it at six, to if you go three and three fourths, you'll go just a little bit over that 11 inches. So it's just a, it's a, like one sixteenth under three and a fourth. Okay. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to have four different styles. I'm going to try to color it all. I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not. All right. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I'm going to use the same colors, but we're going to show the different ways. Um, to spritz it with our spritzer, to dab with our painters, to actually spray with a regular spray bottle, and then the drip method. So we're going to be using the same. Um, I put in new contacts this morning, so hopefully my eyes have adjusted okay. So this is light blackberry bliss. This is light balmy blue. I think this is daffodil, isn't it? Yeah, light, uh, light daffodil delight. Old olive, light. But then for the flurry flamingo, I took the dark because it's so light. And we're going to all color it the same way. So let me go ahead. We're going to do, I'm going to color all four at once, but then... We'll do the spritzing, you know, different. Here, let me turn it like this. And that, and that way I might be able to get all four on. There you go. Because I want these to be exactly the same or as close to the same as you can get. So let me just scribble. These are the blends. So these are the alcohol-based. I hope you can see that all. Yeah, okay. All right. So that was the... Blackberry Bliss, um, Balmy Blue, and usually I don't have it inside the tray when I'm coloring, but just for a time saver, not to have to move it out, I'm going to do it anyway. All right, trying to make this as even as possible, and then I think I'm going to go with the Daffodil Delight in the middle. And 
If you want to go over, lap over, you can. I try to get as close up to it without going over, but if I go, if I actually touch that balmy blue, not a big deal. All right, then I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go next with the, oops, wrong end, with the Flirty Flamingo. Finish up with the old olive. And I think because I'm getting so much, I think that very first one I did, I didn't, I left lots of white spaces in between. And I think that's why that first one that I did was so airy looking compared to the others. I'm not sure which way I like the best. All right, so we'll put those up there. So as you can see, those are pretty much the same. All right? All right. So let's take the first one. The first one, I'm going to use our spritzer. Okay, let me make sure that looks centered. Okay. I'm going to take the spritzer, and I'm going to go up from a little bit of a height, okay? So here's like my phone. I'm going to go up a little bit of a height. I'm just going to spritz over. Pretty generously now you're gonna see it on there but let it sit for a little bit and it's gonna to start to react and if you want to go back in and go closer you can which I think I am gonna go just a little bit closer just to muddy out those lines there we go all right and we're gonna set that one over here let me see. Let me get. Let me get. Where's my tweezers? Oh my gosh. I find that my carousel. I used them last week, of course. Oh, here they are. Oh. oh my goodness, I keep spinning around my. Oh, there they are. They're hidden behind the roller brush. All right, so now you can see how that's starting to, and as it dries, um, it will go ahead. I'm going to go back in, and we can All right. So here's the next one. So that was just spritzing it with our spritzer, which is a pretty direct spray. All right, here's the next one. This one is our painters, and I like squeezing it so it's there. And then you can flick it. Or you can touch. And as you can see, this, you'll get some of the color transferred unless you wipe it off in between. Kind of flick it just a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to take some of that color off and I'm going to pounce over here where some of the lines are still a little drastic. I'm going to bring that one over to the side to dry. All right. We might have to actually move some of these out. I don't like really moving them till they're um, dry, though. All right. Next one. And this one, I'm going to bring in a piece of scratch cardstock just to kind of keep it from going on that side, I want to make sure. Let me move it over. All right, so this is a spray bottle, just a regular spray bottle. 
and you see it's a pretty direct it's a pretty direct spray And it gets clogged a lot. All right, let me. All right, I have to poke it again. The inside of this, I don't know if it's because of the alcohol or because you can see it's such an old bottle that some of the um, the insides of the bottle is actually um, breaking off in it. Some of the, what is it, the rubber? Ah, uh, now it's not gonna work. It works good for a while, then it kind of dies. All right, we're gonna leave it the way it is. I'm just gonna flick off what's on my hands on there. All right. So that one, if this was working better, I don't know how long I've had this bottle. There, you can kind of hear it now. All right, let me wipe my hands off over here. So that's not the greatest, but and then, as you can see, some of the extra spurts came over. But then my last method, let me move my bones over here so you can see it. On this, I take the spray bottle, but instead I just use a, I'm just using the tube, the end of the tube to splatter. And you probably can't hear it, but I can. I can hear it. It's like rain on your window. You know, it's just like that little noise. All right. So again, let me wipe off my hands really quick. You get really dirty doing this. Or maybe that's from the bottle. That doesn't even look like any of the color. Oh, that's from the bottle. Don't worry. All right. So here... You can kind of see the different looks. Okay, they're not dry. And I usually don't like touching them until they're dry. So here was the overall. This was the spritzer. Gives you kind of a more muddled. Um, it's such a direct spray that it really goes in, you know, hard. All right. So then this was our painter. Just flicking it. This was the spray bottle when the spray bottle was actually working and this was the drip method which gives you more of that um raindrop look so decide which one you like the best i'm gonna um i'll try to do the still picture once it's dry and that'll be the the cover page the picture for the cover page but just make sure that your alcohol now the ones that were using it on there were using ninety seven ninety nine. Mine's ninety one. I didn't want to go out just to buy it higher. So this is what you're getting with the ninety one. But I guess the higher you get, like ninety seven ninety nine, how it's a little more. I don't know if it's more direct, but it's a little. Uh, you get like the more reaction, I guess. But as you can see here, let me take. I am going to take these out. I think they're mostly dry. I'll just touch the edges there. So you can see them against that white. Oh, this one's completely dry. Oh, I can't wait for May 1st. I can get a new uh, cover sheet. This one's getting pretty dirty. And this one's almost dry. So there you can see. Let me move it up a little. You can see how beautiful all of those are. And then... You set that on there. When you slide the white underneath there, so like here's this one, you slide the white under there. Just gorgeous. This one, I might go back and spritz a little more because the lines are just way too, um, 
they're not uh, blended enough. But let me see. This one looks the wettest. Let me. I'm not going to put it face down, of course. But look at that once you put it on that white. And of course, when you put it on the adhesive seats, you put it on this side. And then this will be the side that you see through. All right, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy. And thanks for joining me on a Wednesday. Remember, uh, hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and give me a thumbs up. I'll try to get to comments on Saturday when I, again, have eight hours just to craft. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.